Hello, fellas. David DeCoston here again. I thought this morning I would talk about tool holders and how you hold the tools in the spindles. In 1975 is when the CNC machines started coming out, the full machine centers. And one of the biggest manufacturers and users of CNC equipment was Caterpillar Tractor. They uh, bought the first ones off the assembly lines. And they had a problem because everybody had a different method of holding the tools. There's only two methods, a solid adapter or a collet. Well, Caterpillar says, hold on, boys. we got to design a tool holder that we want. And if they're going to supply us a machine, it has to have this standard tool holder. Because you can imagine they had probably 100,000 of these tool holders in, through, in their manufacturing uh, assembly uh, departments. So Caterpillar divine, designed the V-flange here with the slot, and this diameter here for that length, you couldn't infringe on that area. And uh, it has standard 40 taper tool, so they call this a Cat 40, or Caterpillar 40 tool holder. They had a pull stud, and they said, you've got to make a pull stud to this specifications. And uh, that kind of standardized the industry. This is probably the most uh, standard tool holder used. Uh, one of the problems they had with these tool holders is the pull stud screws into a 5 8 11 thread, and it was just a tap thread. So I've seen these pull studs run out to the taper as much as 15 thousandths. Well, unless your draw bar here can accommodate that run out, your tool, the taper doesn't come in contact, 100% contact with a spindle. And of course you have terrible vibrations. So everybody had to scramble and modify their draw bar so it would float a little bit and uh, uh, pick up that run out of that pull stud. Now the other method is a collet. And uh, the problem with a collet is, well with these, these pull studs here, uh, you know, they have anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 pound uh, Belleville springs that hold that tool in the spindle. So it's locked taper to taper. The problem with a collet is, is if you have, a, it's hard to get more than 1,000 pound pressure out of your Belleville spring. For one reason, you you got to have a, a cylinder that can compress those to release the tool. Well, here's the problem with a collet. If you take, you know, everybody's seen a Bridgeport mill, and the guy uh, takes his 12-inch or 10-inch wrench and pull, tightens it up, you know. Well, if you, uh, if you do a little calculation, I'm going to show you how you figure out the mechanical advantage of a, that you have with a, a wrench on a drawbar. Say, say your, uh, your hex here in your, your drawbar is say 10 inches here. Well, you wanna know what the circumference of that circle is there. So you multiply 10 times pi and uh, you get, uh, you know, you get 20 because this is a 10 inch radius. Uh, it's pi times the diameter equals the circumference, so 20 times 3.14 equals. It travels 62 inches around that circle, but it only advances up 50 thousandths because it's a 5 eighths, uh, 20, I mean half inch 20 thread. So you divide that by 0 0.05, and that's your mechanical advantage, 1,256 to one. Well, if the guy puts five pounds of pressure on his wrench, and that's nothing. You multiply that times five, that'll tell you what spring pressure you need. You need 6,280 pounds of spring pressure to match that five pounds torque on a, a 10 inch wrench. So you can see where a problem is with the collet. You just don't have the, the rigidity that's required you know, to do a machining operation that's vibration free. So that ruled out the collet because uh, 
best you get was a thousand. So you're five thousand two hundred eighty pounds short of the actual required pull on that collet to lock that tool in there. Now I've had people say, "Well, why did you divide devise your own tool holder, Dave?" And I call this my Cat R8 because it has, you notice, it has the same basic uh, V flange. Uh, this tool doesn't have the slots, but it has slots for orient spindle orientation. And it has a pull stud that's machined on it. And when I have these made up, uh, we make them out of 4140, and they're machined from uh, heat treated bar stock, and they're machined all in one chucking. So everything runs dead true. Now, why I decided to do this, because I could see that a you know, I wanted to help guys retrofit their their machine with an R8 spindle. So uh, that's why I designed this tool, because it, it goes right into an R8 spindle. Now the draw bar is the important part, which holds the, uh, gets a, captures this pull stud, and actually the ball factor captured and pull it into the spindle. <clears throat> now with this taper, a thousand pounds is, is adequate. Now here's how it works. Here, this is the draw bar, and this is the balls that that reach behind these this this knob on the pull stud and pull it in. So you have on this end here you have ball valvule springs, and that, these are about uh, about thousand pound pull, and I have enough springs there uh, that. You don't, you, you, first you gotta calculate how far you wanna move, compress these springs. And you never wanna have a stack that you flatten out the springs because then the springs break. The life of the spring just goes haywire. I've got like 18 springs in there. So you put those there. <coughs> and then this sleeve here goes right up in the, the uh, standard R8 spindle. And, uh, so you don't have to modify your spindle at all. And there's a spring here. Where is it? There it is. This little spring here pushes off the draw bar. <coughs> and that keeps this always in position up in the spindle. <coughs> then you have six balls. Now these balls won't go through because the way I machine them, I machine them with a ball <coughs> end mill, excuse me, so that the balls don't go through. But yet this diameter... Uh, is is just right here. So when, if I put this tool in here now, these balls are all in to the pull, pull in position. So if I put this tool in, you watch these balls, you'll see them go out, see. Oop, see them pop out there? Now I got grease in there to keep them from falling out because uh, I guarantee you they'll roll all over the place. And in this sleeve here, let me pull this sleeve off. There's two diameters. This diameter here, which is the bigger one, is where the balls are allowed to expand out so you can get the tool out. This diameter here is where it holds the balls in, traps the balls in behind the pull stud. So let's uh, put it together and we can see if we can show you how it works. All right, so this is, would be in all the way in the pulling position, so the pull stud won't go in there, see? Now, if I release this just a little bit and those balls go into that bigger diameter, see, now my pull stud can actually go in there. Then, then when your draw bar pulls back, it gets entrapped in that area. Now you can't get the, now, now the, the tool holder is trapped in the, uh, uh, behind the, the knob on the pull stud. So that's basically how it works. So uh, that's why I chose to, uh, you know, use the design my own cat R8 tool holder is because uh, it's just superior to the collet. The collet is just about useless, uh, you know, with a thousand pounds of pressure, with friction and everything working against you. Now, these things here are all run dead concentric because they're machined all at one time. Anyways, that's how a draw bar works, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, I'll think of something next time. And that's it. Signing off. Bye now.